And welcome everyone to a very special and historic edition of Coin Local 6 at 6. I'm Kelly Day. And I'm Jeff Gianola. He is part of our family, and for years he's been part of your family. There will be tears and smiles tonight mm -hmm. because this newscast marks Mike Donahue's last broadcast here at Coin. He's anchored here for 44 years, a long, wonderful career. And because it's always been about the news for Mike, let's get right to it. Our friend and our colleague, Mike Donahue, with the top stories. Thanks, Kelly and Jeff. Uh, thank you for joining me for this last newscast. We begin with a health alert for you tonight from the Oregon coast, where a water advisory is in effect for Cannon Beach. And that warning applies to you and your pets. Bacteria levels are too high for you to go safely into the water. And the big problem is there at Cannon Beach. And Coin Local 6 reporter Carla Castanio is also there. She has more on the warning, and she shows us what she found on the beach today. Health officials issued the advisory after test results this morning found the fecal bacteria levels at more than twice the recommended limit. Still here at Cannon Beach, most of the signs have not been changed to warn people. The sign at Ecola State Park says the waters indicate normal bacteria levels, but we did find this sign posted near the Tolavana Inn. That's all they're doing? That's um, that's not enough. Like if because people do bring their children out here and let them play even in the bad weather. They should have some signs up, like in the sand right there. Beachgoers had no idea a health advisory had been issued. Some had even gone in the water. We probably wouldn't have come down today knowing it. Nobody seems to know about it. The Televana Inn says it's unusual to see an advisory like this at Cannon Beach, and reservations are coming in as usual. We seldom get notices. Um, I, I think that this is probably the first one that's raised any eyebrows in a long, long time. No one knows exactly why the levels are so high. It could be anything from uh, birds or other animals from pets, um, or it can be from stormwater or any other kinds of runoff that are coming you know, through the creeks or across the beach. The high levels of bacteria can make both humans and pets very sick, but it's still safe to go to the beach, just not in the water. Children and the elderly tend to be more vulnerable to the bacteria. As for the signs, we're told they're in the process of being changed. If you do come in contact with water here at Cannon Beach, health officials say you should wash immediately with soap and water. Now, another test has been taken. Those results will be in tomorrow morning, but health officials say it could be a couple of days before it's safe to go into this water here at Cannon Beach. Reporting for you from Cannon Beach, Carla Castano, Coin Local 6. Thank you, Carla. Now a developing story out of Hillsboro, where dozens of people were evacuated from a Goodwill warehouse after workers there found a white substance. That warehouse is on Southeast 234th and TV Highway. The discovery was made just after 10 this morning. Police say an employee going through donations found an unknown chalky white substance at the bottom of a candle holder. The warehouse was evacuated, no one was hurt, and the person who found the substance was decontaminated. Tonight, we're told, the substance is not hazardous. A coin follow-up now to a murder case. Clark County prosecutors say they won't ask for the death penalty for a Vancouver man accused of killing his girlfriend. Police say Dennis Walter stabbed Corey Fredrickson, stabbed her to death, and dumped her body down an embankment. That was in May 2011. Walter's attorney says he suffers from mental illness. Walter's trial is set for October. Only on 6, Clark County Animal Control is investigating after being shown this video. It shows a pit bull being roughed up at a home in northeast Vancouver. A neighbor shot the eight-minute clip of the dog named Romeo. You see him being slapped. He's struggling. Eventually, he's kicked. And then it appears the owners uh, try to put the dog in a cage that appears to be too small for him. Neighbor T.J. Lockhart shot the video. He and others say it's not the first time nor the first dog that's been abused here. Everything says the way they keep going, if they don't take care of the dog, it could die. And I hate to see that happen. Yeah. It's an innocent animal. It needs love and care. The owners are not facing any criminal charges, but they could face penalties from animal control. Caught on camera, a close call for a Portland bicyclist. It could have put her in the hospital. This video was posted on YouTube. The accident happened yesterday at the intersection of Highway 26 and Sylvan. You can see the bicyclist on the right side of the screen. The driver doesn't notice her and starts to go forward, clipping her bike's rear wheel. A split second later, and this could have been a bad accident, but the bicyclist was able to ride away with only minor damage to her bike. 
A LOCAL MOM SAYS A TEACHER CROSSED THE LINE WITH HER SON, SLAMMING HIS HEAD INTO A LOCKER. I'VE NEVER HAD A, a TEACHER um, PUT HANDS ON ANY OF MY KIDS. You know, and to hear my son, you know, um, crying and barely being able to breathe because of a teacher, you know, I'm highly upset. The student says the incident happened during class at Floyd Light Middle School. More on what the school is doing to investigate these accusations and why the family may press charges. That's coming up tonight on Coin Local 6 at 11. New at 6, an unusual sight on the Oregon coast. A cougar has been sighted in Warrenton. People living on the 300 block of First Avenue saw the cougar. Sightings uh, in this area are rare, so if you spot the cougar, call the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. Well, May is, is ending with showers, enough to break a record. Chief Meteorologist Bruce Sussman is in the Pinpoint Weather Center. Bruce, uh, what's your forecast for the start of June? Uh, you know, well, it's going to start out with more rain, Mike, if you can believe that. But I think we're going to squeak in some dry Rose Festival events. And tonight, you were just seeing a live look from down at the waterfront and a city fair going on tonight. It's still 70 degrees right now, and the rain has stopped. So that's nice that we're finally catching a break. If you're going to city fair right along in Portland's waterfront, upper 60s will do it for most of the evening with all the clouds overhead it's tough for us to cool very fast and of course if you've been outside you know it's humid it's about a third more humid than this very time last night and that was because of the rain we had this morning a couple of sprinkles still going on the east side of town out towards the foothills of the cascades otherwise we are dry right now check out these unusual high temperatures today 70 in portland it was six degrees warmer in salem nine degrees warmer down in eugene so you can tell who had the sun and we were just a little too far north in Portland and Vancouver to really break out the heat 90s down in Medford. Now, looking ahead, uh, tomorrow I see this area out here, and this, yes, it's lifting north. But what happens is the southern edge will drag right across our skies, and it's going to increase our showers as we go through the day and eventually kick us all the way over to light rain. Here's our rain cast, and you see what happens tomorrow morning some showers off and on, and then in the afternoon a better chance for more widely scattered showers. This is tomorrow night. It looks like at some point our Friday evening will be turning wet. The good news is we get this moisture out of here before we get to Saturday. Saturday night. And the good news for that is that Saturday is a big night. It's our Starlight Saturday night here in Portland. If you're running the Starlight Run, it's going to be around 60 degrees at the 745 start. What if you're going to the parade just to watch all the floats go by? It's going to be 58 degrees and looking mostly dry as the parade starts down West Burnside. So here's your day planner for tomorrow. We're rolling out in the 50s, but upper 50s, and we'll be in the low 70s to finish the day. Your seven day forecast, this is how it stacks up 66 on Saturday and 68 on Sunday. So we've got a cooler seven day forecast in the works. But the most important forecast, of course, Mike's retirement forecast. <laughs> and guess what? It looks so bright, you're going to have to wear shades, Mike. <laughs> I wouldn't have ordered this weather, though, for my yeah, Mike's day. Well, you would have gone for like 75 and 70. That would have been yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're sure going to miss you. I still remember my first time in this studio. And Mike was the first one to came up and say hi to me. And I worked at another station at the time. So that was very gracious. He was still nice to you. He was still nice to me. We, we were already friends. So <laughs> We were. So anyway, we're really going to miss you around here. And it's been great and an honor uh, to work alongside you. And on my Facebook weather page tonight, people are already saying, I'm going to miss Mike. I can't believe this. Yeah. And all that stuff. So hey, thank luck. you, Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, we've got the, the studios filled with people right now taking pictures of Mike. So you're probably not used to doing the newscast with flashes. No. Going on. <laughs> Very different. And I think back on all the weather people you worked with over the oh. years, and they always got the forecast right. That's we never get it wrong here, right? <laughs> oh. I love it. Well, coming up, we call Mike an Oregon original, and Mike's taken us on many journeys. But Mike and I take a journey back home to where it all started, in Albany, Oregon. Mike, congratulations on a rare achievement, 44 years of telling great stories. From all of us here at CBS Sunday Morning, enjoy every minute of retirement. I'll see you on the radio. Mike, you represent uh, to journalism uh, history that is unsurpassed with the changes uh, the journalism has seen over the years, and you're going to be missed not only in the newsroom, but by the industry as a whole. Bye, Mike. <laughs>